Hey, how are we doing on this joyous Saturday morning on our wonderful four day weekends that we've got here? Um, and as you can see, I'm rocking my hoodie and the height of comfort uh, in this Saturday morning because I'm still, I'm kind of now at the stage that once you go out drinking in your 30s, like, the recovery time is not like it was when you're like in your early 20s and like the idea of like going anywhere near alcohol for like a full week after is like pure torture well i'm fine um, pressure up it is 8 45 and i think you messaged me well like part, partly, like you partly it's because like my housemate was going to work and i heard their alarm go off at like five to seven um so yeah so after yesterday when next door we're having like building work going on on Good Friday, as you do. So when I'm like just literally being a vampire locked in my room and like just turning off the sunlight, it's like that's just too much noise. Um, but yeah, so I was up and awake, and it's a it's a gorgeous sunny day actually. It here is. In... I can almost forget about the football last night now and the anti climax of supporting Fulham and Fulham nearly spursing it up last night basically it's the only way to describe but you've still them. got like you've still got like four or five games anyway so it's like you, you only need we only need like three points to go oh. up that's it now but yeah they spurs it up last night spurs have been flying they had another great way result last weekend smashed villa arsenal lost which helped and we've got brighton at lunchtime today so fingers crossed it's things are looking looking good on that front so we're at episode nine. We are indeed on. Obviously, we need nine. our sporting links. Unfortunately, I can't use Mitrovic as number nine because he was dreadful last was night. Terrible and last night. If Fulham had got promoted, I could have been singing the Mitrovic craze. But it's over to you then to pick our number nine. Well, it's, it's the it's obviously it's the big one. You know, being you know being a real sucker for punishment. Similarly, like Ian is with Fulham, with me with Dallas Cowboys. Um, so obviously nine is the opportunity to pay homage to um the greatest quarterback i saw play for the cowboys regularly obviously saw troy before um but you know the one the only tony romo you know the great the voice of um when you're listening to the nfl on he's on cbs isn't he i can't yeah. remember which cbs or fox um who, yeah, you know, massively underrated player, played in some pretty average teams and <clears throat> just shown that when you sort of listen to his analysis and what he does, that, it, you know, clearly if Jerry would have invested a lot more around him, that we could have done great things. But, um, yeah, so he was, he's my quarterback. You know, I'm happy with Dak and what he's doing, but say, so, Tony, Tony is my guy. And to show how hungover you still are, you're not even in your Tony Roma shirt, which you did wear for the Brett Eldridge interview. I did. Day. I did when I spoke to Brett Eldridge. That's like that as well. That was quite cool. Like, because if people haven't kind of seen that yet, um, I'd sort of, when you sort of do interviews and stuff, you kind of nowadays, like Instagram is the best thing ever because it makes like research and prep so much easier. So you kind of have a scroll through and it's like, can I find something that not everybody else is going to ask? Because so many people are so like rigid when they do interviews and it's like, it's very formulaic let's ask the same questions over and over again and people live through groundhog day and i'd seen that he'd uh back end of last year that one of his shows that peyton manning had gone on stage and sung with him so we kind of another nfl link here and so kind of asked him about how he how he knew peyton and how peyton ended up going on stage so that's in the in the brett eldridge piece which is on the site which is definitely worth checking out all right so yesterday was friday and we had some new music, singles, albums out. Not the busiest Friday, though, compared to some right. we've had recently. Are you going to start off with some? Yeah, there's, there's kind of been a couple kind of going through because obviously Eric Pasley, uh, he brought out his album, like kind of extended EP, which we talked about a few weeks back. We're going to have an interview with Eric uh, coming to the site next week as well because um, he's obviously about to head on a very long, extensive UK tour with the Shires um, in a couple of weeks' time um but his album is it's basically a a collection of songs that if you've ever seen Pazley play live 
you'll have heard him play live, but he probably hasn't actually cut before. So a lot of the kind of like the the songs that people sort of know, like Rewind by Rascal Flatts and uh, The Driver, which he featured on with Charles Kelly, and Even If It Breaks Your Heart, Barefoot Blue, Barefoot Blue Jean Night, um, and Angel Eyes, yeah. Love and Theft. I've well remembered. Um, so he's kind of cut those and put them with uh, some of the other songs that he did um, off his album two records back. And so he's kind of put that together and that's really cool. Um, and so yeah, times very nicely before his UK tour. Um, and then single wise, the only one I sort of really listened to because I had sort of pointed out that I was feeling a bit rough yesterday. Um, Abby Cohn, uh, her new track king of the world came out yesterday which is really really cool um she's got her debut ep coming next friday as well which is really really exciting for her um and you know it's just the songs that she's put out already rhinestone wing hate me and and now this as well it just gives people a real good feel for what's gonna come with that yeah so elsewhere little big town have released a track called hell yeah so they'll obviously be over here Supporting the Eagles, isn't it? They are indeed. Yep. Um, there's new music from Ingrid Andres, Morgan Wallen, Mitchell Tenpenny, Miko Moon with a very kind of upbeat summer track and easy tonight. Julia Cole, who is over here as well soon for Buckle and Boots, isn't she actually? She'll be over here for Fillmore, release a track. Obviously, we caught up with him recently as well. So there's plenty of new music, say not probably the biggest one. Yeah, week of new music we've had recently. But last weekend, Jamie decided to yet again give his liver some more punishment. And once again, head out of London for a festival. Yeah. Look at you, you big, you big jet setter traveler, you. Yeah, you know, the dizzy heights of Portsmouth down on the south, or Portsmouth for our American friends. Um, so yeah, headed down to the south coast to the Gertie Bar um, on South Sea Pier. It's a really, really cool venue. Really, really nice. I was a big fan of the venue. Like the venue a lot. Um, so it was Hannah Roper, Lily Garland. Um, she she puts on this event, Country on the Coast. So I went down. It's Friday night, all day Saturday and Saturday night, and then kind of Sunday finishing a little bit, kind of earlier on a Sunday. Um, and yeah, it was it was really cool. So they had um, Kate Hurt, Gasoline Matches, Gareth Nugent, Megan Lee, Alan Finlan, Lucy Blue, who are all great and we all know they're great and things as well um and it was nice to kind of check out some other artists kind of i hadn't seen before um a guy called elliot joseph um who a lot of my kind of portsmouth friends had talked a lot about and things before i uh, really liked what he did it's kind of it's more sort of like sort of like celtic sort of folky vibe um but he's really really good and he's got incredible hair as well it's kind of it's generally like just like he, he looks like l'oreal advert um is the only way to describe him but his his voice and his stuff is really really cool too um and also um an act i'd never heard of before actually called motel sundown who are a trio of two irish girls and, and a fella and they're based up in liverpool um and they're really cool like a really great sort of harmony sound um red sky july would be the sort of similarity if people kind of haven't sort of listened but um I, I really like them. I think there's, you know, definitely one of one of the best acts I think I've come across in a while in terms of people doing kind of the country Americana sort of stuff over here. Um, and I just thought that was really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, it was a fun weekend. I got drunk, standard, um, and had a good time. And the sun was out, so it's always nice being on the, by the seaside when the sun's out. So while you were there, you caught up with Alan Finlan, amongst others. I did indeed. So and we've done a very cleverly switch over to that interview now but we we need some people to do our swear warning because this uh this has swearing from the output i think it's like i i think the third word in the whole thing is a swear word uh, yeah third yeah third yeah. word so yeah so this is jamie catching up with Alan Finlan last weekend at Country on the Coast. I've been, I've been shat on three times in the past week. That's a beautiful way to start as we're going. <laughs> <laughs> the wonderful words. Oh, I'm living 
the that. wonderful words of Alan Finland that he's ce- celebrating his third day of joining his 30s by us talking about the joys of seagulls and other birds that have uh, shat on my life. <laughs> yeah, well, to, well, to be fair, I suppose it kind of it's, it's rather a bird shit in your life rather than you kind of sort of doing it yourself. But yeah, so we're down here at the Gaiety Bar in South Sea. Oh god, we were actually starting the recording. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's the best part. I knew he was doing that. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I mean. So, I so, knew he was So, like we said, we're fully on brand. So we're here and it's actually a, a very nice day it's for the second day running. Beautiful. With the great sights of, well, the, the pyramid. Does it have a technical name? It's, 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 it's the pyramids. Yeah. Okay, so it's a, what takes place at the pyramids? Um, I, well, it's a music venue and okay. a swimming pool. Nice. But the pyramids yeah. themselves are the music venue. I've seen the darkness there live. I saw Franz Ferdinand there. Oh, nice. But no, the darkness was good. Ten years after the permission to land and they played them back to back. Oh, amazing. Front row. It's always cool though when like bands kind of like revisit like old albums and stuff. And it's like rather than it's like, we're not just going to play your, our new stuff that we need to play. It's like you've paid to see a gig and yeah. like go for yeah. it and stuff. But anyway, so we're, we're kind of supposed to be talking about country and the coast and such things down yeah. here. So like no, I said... I, I hate country music. So like I said, we, we have got, we've got Alan Finland with us and we've also got James Mins from Live in the Living Room and James has been working really hard this weekend, kind of getting lots of yeah. wonderful content. So what exactly have you been doing when we've been coming well, into this wonderful... Wonderful old tattoo place that we live in yeah. right now. Basically, what well, I'm like an adult. Um, I film the acts for Live and Living Room. I did the first one back in 2019, and obviously stuff happened. And then, yeah. <laughs> and now we're back. So I was like, so Hannah, kind of like, would you want me to come back and film the acts? And she's like, yes. So it's always like the thing of where are we going to film it? Because last time was a sweet shop. Now we're in an old, ta- old tattoo shop. So, um, but this is great because it's quiet. Yeah, and like you can't hear anything. Uh, are we are we thinking the tattoo shop is an upgrade on a sweet shop or a downgrade? Are we just um, in general? Looking terms? around in this room is a massive downgrade. Okay. Plus it's, the fact that sh- sugary things can give you diabetes and that that's you know, diabetes. 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 <laughs> uh, oh, the, sweet, you can't give you diabetes. There were no sweeties in that shop though. They moved all the sweeties oh. out. But it was a lovely shade of pink, so it was great backdrop. Nice. Uh, we've got a lovely uh, country and country backdrop. Now, yep. On brand, so it's great. Uh, I would say this is better because it's bigger. Yeah. And it's almost soundproof in a way. Because it's like you've got these old patio doors kind of thing. Yeah. Like, like my mum's like conservatory. And um, and it's great. And plus Axe can people wash as they play. Yeah. And as well as great. So. so so people have been coming kind of in and kind of recording a song or two yeah, and that's yeah. gonna come on to on to the library in the living room. Yeah, yeah. The, the what I said to Hannah is that basically she has episode seventeen of the show. We're gonna have nine or ten acts in the main show and the rest will go into two completions so everyone gets featured yeah only nine or ten will go in the main show um uh we were supposed to if uh, don was supposed to be doing interviews because i think i'm going to time of work which sucks but never mind um but so i'm basically doing the content and then send this video go out it'll create magic and then <laughs> and then and then yeah so she has episode 17 we'll be doing interviews with hannah and emma stenson yeah, <laughs> yeah, because Emma Spencer's kind of one of well, the only act playing this weekend that's not living here. Uh, so obviously, yeah. Owen Owen not Owen and other Diary are not British, but they kind of live here. But yeah, Emma Spencer's yeah. come over from Sweden and things. So she played yesterday. So yeah. in a weird sort of time frame, that would be Saturday. She's also doing something in the round. Yeah, the, yeah. the writers round of like yeah. Dixie Darling, Andy Hughes, and Emma Spencer, and someone else. I can't but um, yeah, she's great because I was excited about her because when I came here on Friday, uh, Hannah was playing like Axel, playing like she's out. I thought this is a catchy song, so she's out there. And uh, I was in a sense, and I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, oh, oh, oh my. Because um, she's great. And she did, her session was amazing, I thought it would be. And yeah, I mean, there's been lots of surprises like, oh, those harmonies are one point. 
I, I think the thing I was most impressed with yesterday, d- during the, the pain of existence, which I... <laughs> Every day. Which we're not... Every well, day. yeah, just that in general, <laughs> but kind of, you know, the, the, dreaded, the two dreaded words that when put together make a, something that I don't think does great things for customers. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. we're not, we're not, we're not, We're not going to swear, because no, we obviously don't want to use negative no, kind no, of no, things, no. but they, uh, they were embracing, and uh, Orion in particular was... Uh, Looked like she definitely done it before. Yeah, and they were good. The fact, it. the fact is that we're kind of talking about line dance in a way that it's kind of dirty than having sex. But well, it's um, like you should have said Adam was like dying inside. It's like yeah, like I, I understand like the whole line dance thing. It's a, it's a really good sort of thing for people to do and blah 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 blah. blah. But the, the, I, I feel like there is. There is a time and a place. place. Time and place. There is only so much more before I can put a barrel in my mouth. I was like, I knew it was good because that means I could actually eat lunch. Yeah. Uh, during that time. And because um, doing this, you don't get to eat. I mean, um, yeah, it was a good time for me to go and get some fresh air. Like, yeah, it's, um, it was it was good scoop fun, is what it was. I think, I think the thing is, I'm probably, I'm probably a bit jealous of it because I, I am crippled, so uh, <laughs> I can't exactly dance. We have a plantar facial. My plantar fasciitis. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so uncoordinated, so I'm gonna do it. I'll be like, oh my god. It'll be like, okay, do that, and then it gets more complicated, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't do that. Like, fa- panic. Ah. I mean, I, I, got, I got taught how to do some steps from The Beast, which is a very complicated line dance. I managed to get through eight steps until I was out of breath. <laughs> Beast on the yoga pose. And that was, that was literally like, t- I think it was like two side switches and a hitch, and I was like, nah, I'm, 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 I'm. <gasps> No. <laughs> so, so what? While line dancing is, you know, well, it is what it is. Yeah, but yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. something that was far more interesting this weekend. Exactly. Obviously, uh, you opened up the whole of the festival this yep. weekend. What your you your local festival as well. Yeah. So you know, it must sort of be quite nice to not have to kind of travel into London or kind of trek halfway up the country to yeah, kind of. Yeah, like literally, like my parents were like, "Oh, we're going shopping. Do you want to live round?" And like, because I'm sharing. Um, a flat around the corner, yeah, and it was just nice to have a fifteen-minute drive rather than a five-hour drive with a break and uh, yeah. then going up somewhere. And it's like, oh, finally, I can do something local. Yeah, it's but great. have you have you got kind of more things in the pipeline for this summer? Yeah, I've got more songs on the way being recorded and stuff. Yeah, um, at the moment my computer died and. I got made redundant, so I don't have any money. So oh. if people want to do like fund me and help me, fund me, yeah, I'll just you know plug all of that. I'll do a Patreon as well. You get like a handwritten note from me that just says thank you. No, I was going to put something else, but is it? <laughs> <laughs> Some, something else, you? Yeah. Yeah, Truck you? Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, so I'm. I'm at the moment, kitting out my spare room, looking like a recording studio, get some stuff done. Nice. And working with my co-writer again, Stephen Manley, who I haven't seen since 2019. But wow. we're, get, we're getting stuff done over the over internet, the wonderful 21st century invention. The magic of Zoom. Oh, the magic of Zoom, WhatsApp and everything like that. But yeah, it's going to be something good. We're, we're, I've, I've already said to him, we need more festival bangers. Yeah. And you know, I, I said to him because I've got, I've got a couple of a couple of ballads, a couple of duets, and I'm like, you know what? I just need to ramp it up a bit. I need to. I need to. You want some earworms? I want yeah. I want some, I want some ones with heavy drums. I, I want to go. I want to go metal chords. Metal chords. <laughs> I think I think call the budget Luke Combs. Yeah, so, that's it. Because you're so damn catchy. <laughs> And so, so the hope is that we're going to have kind of some of those on the way, ready in time. Because you're playing uh, BCMA Fan Fest, Buckland Boots, and Buckland Boots Buckland. again. Yeah, so, wow. third, third time in a row. Yeah, wow. I've actually been to Buckland Boots. Yeah. Oh, you should go. I definitely, I definitely think you know it's a festival that's kind of it's grown a lot from when it first started, just yeah. in terms of how it's done. And I think one of one of the great things I find with not just with Carl and Gary and Laura, but everyone that runs the festivals and things over here, they they want to learn and want to make things better for the artists, for um, you know anyone that's coming and just kind of you know just getting things a lot better. And you sort of see that with the setup they've got there, where they've moved the bar and what they've done with the second stage. They still need to put a mirror in the gents' toilets, which I keep reminding them <laughs> of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the reason for that is when you have like really sort of messy bog brush style hair, like you know, it's just a lot easier to when you're doing things in the sink. Yes, like to, I get that. Yeah. So you know, it's a first world problem, but they still have not addressed it. Um, <laughs> I bet they. 
so there's that and then hopefully kind of you know some more sort of shows and things as well and yeah i do i do small time local gigs as well like in pubs yeah. and clubs and things yeah. like that i've got a couple of com- couple of coming up in uh over April and then in between May and I've got to get some rehearsals in with the band as well. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Ben Gurney from Acoustic Journey fame. Yeah. Is, uh, he's taken a hiatus this year because he recently proposed to his missus. Oh, okay. So uh, I said to him, I said to him in my best Aladdin voice, be free, genie. <laughs> <laughs> And, go um, forth go and explore forth. the past. I have, I have employed the help of a amazing guitar wizard from Cornwall, so hopefully everything a wizard. Will be... Oh yeah, he is a wizard. It's uh, Mr. He... Tom Carey. Tom... Oh, okay. oh, he is a wizard. That guy. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. I've uh, I've been speaking to him recently. He was just like, yeah, what are your dates again? Because I've got to... he he is such a busy man. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. like all over the place. He's like a Bublé tribute as well. Yeah, I, I saw he he did at the like the. BCMA awards like the oh, Sunday yeah. like the like the showcase. Yeah, he did the acoustic, was literally an instrumental, and I was I, that's when I just sort of yeah. fell in love with this yeah, player. I was he, like, he did that for me when I did uh, uh, like a rise man in my living room. He travelled six hours to get, and I was like, are you sure? Like, are you sure you really want to do that? And he did that same instrumental, and I was like, oh my, okay. I was like, oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he is fantastic. So I'm um, employing his help. He's coming in on the last rehearsal because I don't want to drag him away from the paradise that is Cornwall. Oh uh, yeah. So I was like, you, you just do that. And then uh, I've got the help of Sam, Sam. on the drums. Yep. From uh, Danny McMahon. And oh. uh, also we've got my very good friend, very local for me, Gary Elshaw. You saw him last year at Buckland Booze with a red moustache playing bass. What's <laughs> <laughs> that? So in ins and outs of the the Alan Finland project, kind of exactly. you know in every sort of way, and like J- James, you sort of mentioned obviously we're kind of live in the living room and we sort of mentioned it before, but like your your big sort of focus events kind of coming up at the Bedford. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about that. Well, we do we do do two big events because um, anymore is just stupid because um, <laughs> they took a lot of planning. Um, basically, we I want to say we don't have a residency at the Bedford, but we do a lot of our big events. I'd, I'd claim you've got residency at the Bedford. It sounds. Uh, I'll, I'll go with that. Yeah, um, they're, ha- they're happy for me to continue doing shows. I was going to say I don't, I don't think Tony would argue if you said that you've got residency well, there. So. That, I'll, 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 I'll go with that. Um, and it's a great venue. I'll yeah, it's such venue. A, like when I played there in November for you, it was such a beautiful venue. It's and they're, they're, they're a dream to work with. Yeah. Like, the sound guy is amazing, and he even asked me what the lights I wanted. I was like, I've never been t- asked that in my life. <laughs> Like, ones that people I, I think it's as well it's like you sort of think about for anyone that plays there it's like you look it's like how like you know Ed Sheeran played yeah. there like Ellie Golding played Every, everyone it's like anyone that you know writes songs like started doing that you know it's yeah. you know and, and the fact of what they do like each week with like being probably the only like listening room like yes. similar to what you yes. get in Nashville kind of with this like songwriting aspect that people just play you know, it's what four nights a week, and they have a night of comedy as well. Yeah. Where again, a lot of comedians have done. But anyway, so so your event is kind of taking place there. Yeah, um, it's under the live language background, um, which is where all the uh, all the charity stuff is done under, basically. And um, there's two well, two a year. There's one for dementia, there's one for meningitis. Meningitis is in November. Yes, one is for dementia. And it's going to be a very hard event because my dad had dementia before COVID took him back in June 2020. So if you see me in tears, don't worry. <laughs> but you have every uh, right to be in tears, so don't worry. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get a thank you speech and I'm going to burst into tears and see it coming. Um, that's why I have production assistance. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, I've got Gaston matches, uh, Gareth Nugent, and uh, Peter Donovan here live. Cool. Mm. Uh, and which is great. I mean, Gaston on that matches on fire like, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen, Steve could just rock a waistcoat and a pair of jeans and still look cool. <laughs> so, in, in general, like, because obviously I, I, I've been to events before, yeah. the people that sort of haven't, is you, you have a lot of artists that play in yeah. a kind of like a round set, like kind of yeah. round, and then later on people will play full sets. Yeah, I mean, it, it's where well, we, the, when we, the first event at the Bedford we did as uh, a rice round and had a band in the evening, which didn't really work because there was an hour gap and people left. So, so we're doing it as a big writers round, a big national style round. Yeah. And there's three, hang on a minute, there's nine, eight or nine groups of three. Yeah. And then I've got other promoters working with me. I've got um, Country Track Doms, Garden of PR, Voice of Woman, Unsigned Country, uh, DC Brown. Um, yeah, so uh, it's a big. Uh, I want to pick Jess T's in there as well. 
Um, um, but yeah, it's a lot. Um, these, these events are more like collaborations, as it were. Yeah. So I collaborate with other promoters and stuff. Uh, so it's not just me just doing it. Um, and that means I get to I get to book acts I would normally book. Yeah. And stuff, which is great. And but yeah, tickets are on sale now. Yeah. Um, if you go to um, go to socials, it's at uh, this is L I T L R. Yeah. Yeah. As this is L I T L R on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok. Um, and uh, liveland.co.uk. Yep. You uh, you'll see um, you'll see it. So let's talk about it. In, in, in your wonderful spell, you neglected to mention when it's actually taking place. Yes. Which is probably the most important <laughs> thing to, to see, kind of mention. I'm glad, I'm glad. It's happening. It's happening now. Um, now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just in the wrong place. <laughs> that, that, damn it. Sunday, twenty second of May. Uh, towards eleven thirty, goes from twelve to nine. Tickets are ten pounds. You can buy them online, or the door as well. People buy them online just to know how many people are coming. Yep. But um, you can buy them door. I've got a car reader, so there's no excuse. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so yeah, we've we've talked about bird shitting. We've talked about. Alan's wonderful plans for new music and his wonderful band. I think we pretty, pretty much talked about everything apart from Elliot Joseph's hair, really. Oh, that hair. Silky smooth and gorgeous. Oh, you're the <laughs> you're the <laughs> Look, I, I, know, I, know, yeah, I know I'm straight and everything, but this, this is like, oh, oh my God, like, my, my legs were quivering yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I was spinning on a cracker. Blessed are like, meek and meek, me. Oh my God, <laughs> he was like, oh my God. And as I said, I saw him in the solar. He he was just walking along the water, just gliding, like, gliding. And pictures of water were turning to wine yesterday. I was like, "What's going on?" <laughs> well, and then he just looked over and flashed me his nice pearly white smile, and I was like, "Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 it's taboo." Yeah. Oh. Right, well, anyway, um, I've run out of beers. So this feels a very fitting time to end. So this is kind of our part of our bonus edition of putting nonsense um it's been wonderful to have you both as thank I'm, you kind of the, like the virgins like the guests for the first time <laughs> no, we popped our cherries. Well, i was oh, gonna yeah. say well yeah well, i was gonna say it's like it's like i've popped my cherry with alan finland yeah. and james vince yeah, yeah what a way weekend. to end <laughs> so thank you very much to alan for giving up a few minutes of his time yeah and jay and james vince as well so that was you know it was it was cool we so we we sat in a strange little tattoo shop um on the pier as you do on a sunday morning um i think it was sunday lunchtime actually where we sort of did it um but yeah that was cool and so you know we're, we're trying to look at ways for getting you know getting some different interview type content to sort of come in to break down our randomness of kind of filth talk and I say, if anyone wants to do our Peter Crouch style swear warning, you're more than welcome to film it for us. We'd appreciate it. But yeah, so that was that festival. We've had some more festival news and stuff this week. So obviously Black Deer is going to be coming around, which is fantastic. That's returning. Um, they've made kind of their sort of announcement. Firstly, they've given the day splits of what thing's coming and made some great additions. So James, uh, you know, sort of iconic, you know, laid uh sit down and kind of sort of those big hits kind of in like but do you know any other more than those two i think i know i think that's the same as with most people to be honest but so i looked on uh on spotify the other day so i was like i must know another james song i didn't recognize any of them but laid has 121 million listens and sit down has 65 million listens See, I'd have thought it'd be the other, but then I suppose like Laid was in American Pie, wasn't it? It was. So whereas Sit Down was probably like the bigger track, like over here, um, you know, from a global perspective, like Laid probably got a bit more reach. Um, so yeah, so they're going to be headlining the Friday, which also includes Jake Bug, Mel the May, uh, the Cuban Brothers, Wildwood Kin. Um, so they're the guys that are playing on Friday, then uh, Saturday, uh, who we got? So Saturday is Wilco headlining uh, and that, along with the Waterboys, Cam, which is the big new addition from the country perspective um, for Black Deer, which is really, really good that she's coming back over. Uh, so she's gonna be playing also um, who else have we got on the sat on the Saturday? Uh, Izzy Colstock, Kezzy Gill, who's been added as well, which is really good for her. 
uh, Kez sort of coming down and doing that. Uh, you've got um, Milk Carton Kids, Courtney Marie Andrews, so that's looking cool. And then lastly, on the Sunday for Black Deer, um, we already knew that Van Morrison was going to be the big headliner, so that's obviously great. You've got Drive By Truckers, Dead South, Wood Thomas, um, His Golden Messenger, who's the other new kind of big addition to the festival. I didn't know who he was, so I kind of did like the massive sort of like sort of search on like socials and all that sort of thing. And noticed a very random thing that he's while he's kind of over, he's been booked to play a festival in Spain, which has the most random like lineup I've ever seen. Um obviously there's a lot of acts you kind of don't know, but it's got Morgan Wade, there is um Emily Harris, there is um Patty Smith. And then the other headliner is The Offspring. What's that festival called? I, I couldn't, I don't know what the actual festival is called, but I saw it kind of somewhere. It's in Spain. Um, but yeah, I came across that site, like hashtag random. Um, so obviously in this piece, you've had the sort of the interview where Alan and James are talking about the darkness. And now we're kind of bringing on talking about The Offspring, as you do. Um, so yes yeah, so that's black day tickets are on sale for that now you've got the day splits get along it's a great festival the the site is beautiful the way they do everything cashless is is great they're really big on sustainability and recycling and kind of everything and it's just a really good sort of vibe uh and just a really nice part of the world and yeah it's you know you, you've got a lot in terms of music for everyone it's obviously americana driven uh they have kind of like a, a rock bar and they do all like the kind of like like smoking, like cook off demonstrations and all that sort of thing. So there's there's loads going on, and I say down in Tunbridge Wells, which is a gorgeous part of the world. So elsewhere, um, Buckland Boots is obviously coming up in where are we about six weeks time or so now. Mm. Um, they have announced a tour prior to the festival. So there's going to be a songwriters tour which will feature Matt Lang, who is the Sunday night headliner, Julia Cole, Jeremy McComb, and um, tour, um, festival organiser Gary Quinn. And that will be in London, Birmingham, and Glasgow. Artists have actually, the playing festival, have started to show set times, but I'm not certain if we've been No, they put the whole, they, they did the whole thing yesterday. Um, has it all been done, has it? I did see it yeah. yesterday. So uh, you just fill and I'll bring it up. Because... Well, I say I was quite pleased that Dan Davidson is at a decent time on the Sunday, so I might not be home too late Sunday night as someone's have work Monday morning. Yeah. Then the other festival headliner, William Michael Morgan, he is going to be touring the week after the festival. So you've got the week before, it's the Songwriters Tour. The week after, William Michael Morgan will be playing shows in Birmingham, Belfast, Glasgow and London. And... On those, he'll have support from at least two of Andrew McLaughlin, Gary Quinn, and Quiva. So amongst those three, at least two of them are playing on each day. Have you got some details? Yeah, so what? So Carl and, and Laura kind of shared the whole thing yesterday. So Thursday night is American Young's uh, special kind of night, which will be really cool, kind of to kick off, because first, Thursday's the bank holiday as well, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's the Queen. Yeah, it's weird. Queen. It's like, yeah, because a double bank holiday. Um, and then, so the actual festival itself kicking off on the Friday with, as they always do, with like an, an like an acoustic round on stage, which is really good. And that will be with uh, Jeremy McComb, Sophie Hansen, William Michael Morgan and Julia. Uh, and then the main stage on Friday, ML, Jess Friston, Alan Finlan, Audra McLaughlin, Tim Protty Jones, Jade Halliwell. Boom. Saturday, um, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. They've got a writer's round in the middle of the afternoon at half one with Matt Lang, Audra and Karen Waldrop. Um, you've also got Shannon Hines and the Jackson Line amongst people playing on that paddock second stage. And then the main stage, um, you've got Harley Moon, uh, Sophie Hansen, the amazing Eddie Smith and the 507 who've also been announced to be added for Black Deer as well. Um, I think Eddie's playing Sunday at Black Deer. Um, you've got William Michael Morgan, Honky Tonk Roadshow to kind of finish off. And obviously the wonderful Julia Cole, who's going to be playing on the Saturday. And then Sunday, um, Gary, Jade and Kazia are doing their song swap uh, 
kind of acoustic thing again like they did last year you've also got performances from emma moore karen waldrop dan davidson at 740 so for you planning for your trip I can, back I can, i'll get home about 2 a.m and then also uh kind of matt lang essentially headlining and sort of closing out the festival at 10 past nine but then backwards creek are doing their sort of like big on stage jam randomness fun like they did last year so back on beats will be fun it should be a very good weekend i said it works quite nicely with the thursday night to kick it off and it's a proper thursday night show as well yeah compared to last year it was a bit of no one quite knew do we turn up on thursday or not so yeah it'll make it a bit more worthwhile i think this weekend this year and then obviously with the bank holiday as well makes it quite cool yeah um, but obviously so that is the first weekend in june but may is bonkers yeah. basically for um gigs so i'm going to kick off with one we found i don't think it ever really got announced or anything but so midland will be playing the roundhouse on the 21st of may but if you're sat in south london they're also going to be playing the kingston on the friday night so as part of like banquet records it's an intimate set yeah and Again, if you're not going on the Saturday night, tickets for this, it's only £11 or it's £15. 15 quid with the CD. Yeah. So, yeah, £15 with the CD. So, instead of going on the Saturday night, if you can't do the Saturday night, they will be at the church in Kingston, which is a bit of a random yeah, venue. Yeah, as you do. I can't quite see Midland playing a church. I've got to be honest. I can't quite see myself being in a church, but I'm going along it. So, I'll find out what that is like and report back on that one definitely but elsewhere in may i said it is mad so first of may laura evans is playing in london at the grace on the fourth ashley mcbride will be at the roundhouse while two ways home are hosting their roundup show on the same night at the crypt and that will feature harley moon kemp on the 6th of may we have keith urban at the apollo while on the 9th is Brothers Osborne at Roundhouse. And on the same night, Jessica Lynn is playing St Pancras Old Church. On the... Ooh. Oh, oh. No, I totally forgot she was coming back over. Yeah, so I, I think it's just kind of snuck in. On the 10th, yeah. we have Brett Eldridge. As I said, Jamie said earlier, we spoke with him this week. That interview is online now. He and he shows at Kentish that. Town Forum, isn't it? Yeah, that's at Kentish Town. We've got the Vacancy Records Tour, which is featuring Ashley Campbell on the 12th at Camden Assembly. 21st, I say, is Midland at the Roundhouse. And then 29th, the Buck and Boots Songwriters Tour will be in London as well. And there's something in Brighton that got announced this week that's also featuring Ashley Campbell. Yeah, I'd, I'd see, I saw somebody that shared that. That's through... Um... Live in the living room, isn't it? No, I want to say it's... Modern age, I don't know. I modern age, that's one. Yeah, modern age roots. Yeah. Um, they announced a show in Brighton, which I think was a free show as well. Yeah. I can't quite remember the date. Yeah, no, I, I had sort of, I kind of half sort of saw that in kind of like the sort of like hungover haze yesterday. Um, but yeah, so there's loads going on. And like in terms of those venues, like if you kind of, if you are sort of around London, some of the places have changed names. So the Grace is what is upstairs at the garage. Um, and the Camden Assembly is what was formerly known as Barfly, um, just for kind of logistical purposes <laughs> for kind of doing that. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of like all the sort of, you know, tour news. And we've obviously got loads Here we going go. on. I brought up the Modern Age Roots show. So it's Saturday the 14th of May at the Folklore Rooms in Brighton. It is free entry. Uh, the names you'll probably know, Kathleen McGrath, Georgia Nevada, Megan Rose, and as I said, Ashley Campbell, amongst others as well. Oh, wicked. So, so there we go. Yeah. Easy times of, ahead. Yeah, there's kind of a few sort of other bits of news. One thing I put, we kind of, we mentioned like Fillmore kind of at the start. And when obviously Tyler was over, um, was when we first met uh, our buddy Matt Franti. Um, and so some big news from the kind of the Franti household this week that, um, his wife Shauna is pregnant so congratulations to them that they're going to be expecting um kind of later this year so that's really really a good news and the other sort of kind of big news is from team Luke Combs as well yes so 
he's he's not given much away, but we have an album release date of June twenty fourth. The link for it just gives you an album name LC three. So we have yeah. no more details than a pre save at the yeah. minute. But yeah, June twenty fourth is the day. Pre save is open now, and I said it's been very quiet from him, other than that bit of news. Super. And that is us for the week. So have a good Easter. Don't eat too much chocolate. And we'll be back next week with even more. We're back next week. Adios. Thank you and goodbye.